thermodynamics and heat. This could be a hot topic. Thermokinetic energy. Everything is made up of atoms and molecules. Atoms and molecules are in continuous motion. This atomic molecular motion is called thermal kinetic energy or internal energy. When work is done, sometimes it increases an object's or system's thermal kinetic energy. Work done on the system is converted into thermal energy. Work done on the system is converted into thermal energy, which causes the match to ignite. The electric motor of the drill does work on the system which is converted into thermal energy and causes the wood to smoke. The temperature of this water is now 22.4 degrees Celsius. Can we increase the temperature of a liquid with friction? After two minutes of agitation, the temperature has risen very slightly to 22.6 degrees Celsius. So the work from spinning the beaters actually increased the temperature of the water. It agitated the molecules and changed the kinetic energy of the water internally. That's why it's also called internal energy. We notice this molecular motion because of temperature. That's our macroscopic visual of uh, the uh, system's energy. And you know this inherently because if you rub your hands together, they'll get uh, warmer because your mechanical work of moving your hands back and forth is turning into thermal energy. Heat. Heat is given the symbol Q. Now, heat is the transfer of thermal kinetic energy. Note that it, heat is not energy, but the process of transferring thermal kinetic energy from one object uh, to another, or one system to another. As heat is added to a system, the system's thermal energy increases. This is called internal energy. There are three ways that heating occurs, through conduction, convection, and radiation. So first of all, conduction. If I had a, a metal rod that I put near the fire, uh, then the end of the rod would start warming up because it would be heated from the air molecules that are hotter than the rod. Heat always flows from something that's more hot to something that's cooler. And therefore, the hotter end, these molecules moving faster, bump into these molecules, make them move faster, bump into these, make them move faster, and eventually these molecules up here will start to move faster and have more thermal energy. The molecules bumping into each other and continuing on like that is the process of conduction. So that is heating by conduction. Convection is where we have a hot source, an air, or a fluid. Uh, the molecules in the fluid start being agitated and they actually start moving upward. And uh, that movement upward carries these molecules and bumps into the other molecules above them and carries the thermal energy upward and that's called convection. Finally, radiation. Radiation is uh, electromagnetic energy in the form of uh, thermal energy and uh, that's the kind of energy we get from the sun. So thermal energy comes to, the, comes to us from the sun uh, not through convection or conduction but through radiation electromagnetically. Heat flow. Heat has direction. It flows from a high temperature source to a low temperature source. It flows from where the molecules are moving fastest to where the molecules are moving more slowly. So in this particular example, the hot chocolate is 98 degrees and so is the cup, and the surrounding air molecules are only 24 degrees C. So heat is gonna flow from the hot chocolate and cup out to the molecules in the air. So the molecules of the cup and hot chocolate as they're giving up energy to the, to the air molecules, these molecules will start to slow down and this temperature will start to decrease. This temperature will start to increase slightly right around the cup uh, and uh, because those molecules will be moving faster because of the heating. So energy as heat flows from the hotter liquid to the cooler air.
The bigger the difference in temperature, the faster the energy flows. But as this temperature decreases, and this one increases slightly around here, uh, the flow will decrease, the heat, heating will decrease and slow down. The surrounding air is warmed up a little bit from the hot chocolate. Eventually though what will happen is the hot chocolate will and the cup will give up all of its energy to the air around it until its temperature becomes equalized with the temperature around it. And uh, so and the molecules right around the cup will give their energy off to molecules further away and so forth. Since there's lots and lots of molecules way out here that are all around 24 degrees C, eventually all of these molecules will uh, slow back down so that they have a temperature of 24 C again, and so will the hot chocolate and cup, and everything will be at room temperature, and there will be equilibrium, and then there will be no more heat flow once they're at equilibrium. Effects of heating. Materials, when they get warmer, uh, when they're cold, the molecules bunch up. But as materials get warmer and they start vibrating more and more and more, they actually jostle and start to spread out a little bit. So materials, even concrete, tends to expand. You get expansion. And that's why in a bridge or a freeway, when you look at it sometimes on bridges, you'll see that there are these things called expansion joints that allows, when the concrete is hot, it allows the concrete to expand and move in toward each other. And then when it's cooler, it allows them to uh, shrink up and uh, yet you'll still have road surface to go with these fingers crossing. So this is called an expansion joint because of the expansion of the material. These are solids that are expanding. You also can get liquids that are expanding and that's what uh, happens in a thermometer. Uh, alcohol is, and mercury are liquids that can expand pretty rapidly with temperature variation and uh, therefore as a temperature rises the liquid will expand and you'll get a measurement of a uh, higher temperature from a thermometer. So states of matter as you add heat uh, another effect, effect of heating is you can actually move things from being a solid to melting them and then be, they become liquids. And then liquids, if you add heat, can further vibrate and move further and further apart and become gases. And then as an extreme, as you continue adding heat, you can actually break atoms uh, or have uh, atoms kind of broken apart, if you will, as they're moving around relative to each other with their separate parts of protons and electrons. And those are called plasmas. And uh, when you add enough heat to a liquid, it becomes a gas. And uh, when you are looking at gases, we use this equation, which is called the ideal gas law. And it's a law that relates temperature, and uh, therefore thermal energy, really, to pressure and volume. These two numbers, this N is the number of molecules, and this R is a gas constant. So these two things in our systems that we're going to be looking at, these two things are just constants. So the variables at play here are pressure, volume, and temperature. And we want to see how they vary relative to each other in a particular system. So notice that as the temperature increases, the volume is going to increase in our system. The volume of a gas is directly proportional to its absolute temperature. This is referred to as Charles's law. Room temperature is about 293 kelvins. So you saw that when the uh, container, the metal container is put in the hot water, the balloon expanded, and then when it's put back in the cool water, it contracted. And that's kind of the same mechanism at work with a hot air balloon. When you heat the air inside this hot air balloon that's trapped inside of it, it expands. And the same thing can happen in a cylinder in an engine. When the gases expand in a uh, cylinder, it can drive a piston and actually do work for you when the gases expand because of heating. So we just talked about volume, but there's another variable here with uh, increasing temperature to look at. Uh, or changing temperature, and that is pressure. So if we have an, a system where we can't have expansion, if we have a closed, rigid uh, container, 
that uh, can't expand and the volume can't increase, then what will happen is the pressure will increase or decrease because the volume cannot. Higher temperature means a greater pressure. Lower temperature means a lower temperature. And remember that N and R are going to stay constant here because the number of molecules is the same inside this closed container. So again, as the temperature increases, the molecules move faster and faster. Since they can't go anywhere, can't expand this with volume, it's going to create a greater pressure. Getting a data point for pressure and temperature, 100 degrees Celsius. Notice the high pressure at the high temperature. Getting a data point for pressure and temperature. Notice with the cold water Celsius. bath now, the pressure went down. The needle moved down with the colder water. Getting a data point for and pressure now, and even temperature, colder with dry ice, the pressure went Celsius. down even more. Was here with the hot water, cold ice water, now carbon dioxide water. Getting and now, a data point liquid for nitrogen. And Whoa, look at that pressure. Look at the uh, pressure Celsius. go way down with liquid nitrogen. It's very cold. So where does this equation, this ideal gas law, PV equals NRT, lead us? Well, it leads us to doing work. But I think we've done enough work for now. You know, I don't want to force you to do any more, or put too much pressure on you to increase your volume of understanding too much at one time or else you'll run out of energy. Anyway, uh, we'll start with this as we look at thermodynamics and heat engines next. But for now, we have done enough work. I wouldn't want you to overheat. And Scratch's parting thought. And good luck on your quest for continuous improvement.